ever stared at a dense medical paper, knowing it's important, but feeling overwhelmed by the time it'll take to digest? As a medical professional, I've been there, but what if I told you that you could transform a two-hour reading session into a 10-minute learning experience? Today, I'm going to show you exactly how I use cutting-edge AI tools to rapidly understand complex medical literature, create visual summaries, and store knowledge in a way that actually sticks. Whether you're a busy clinician or researcher or a medical student, these free tools can change how you learn. Let me show you how I recently tackled a complex paper about sepsis endotypes in just a few minutes. So I am a subscriber to Critical Care Reviews and this fantastic resource from Rob McSweeney in Northern Ireland provides regular updates on critical care literature. And you can see this one has suggested an article saying deciphering sepsis. So this sounds interesting. This is his recommended paper of the week. So I'll click on it and I'll have a look and see if this is one that I've got time to read and ingest because it's probably quite important. And it has some key points here. It all looks quite complex and related to immunology. And so I'm going to look down some diagrams, some of which look more complicated than others. And I'm wondering if this is really something that I have time to read or not. And it's putting me off a bit, to be honest. It's going to take me a couple of hours to get my head around this stuff, and I don't have a couple of hours. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this article. I'm going to get the PDF. I'm going to chuck that into my downloads. And then if I go to my downloads and um, open that PDF and have a look at it, um, I might discover that it's going to take a while to read. So what I'm doing is I'm using an AI tool. I use Claude.ai, you could use ChatGPT, you could use Google Gemini, it doesn't matter. And what you can do is you can ask Claude to summarize this piece of work. So it's going to read the article for me and give me the key points, let me know what's clinically relevant. And all I've got to do to help it do that is ask it a question and drag the PDF file into Claude. So it will be uploaded to Claude, Claude will read it for me and Claude will tell me what's relevant. So I'm dragging that PDF in and giving it to Claude. It will get uploaded and we'll see what Claude makes of it. So it doesn't really doesn't take too long uh, for it to upload and then for when you press go, press a little arrow, Claude's going to do all the work. So it's going to read this article for me. Now do I trust it to get it right every time? Probably not but I trust it's got more time and energy than I have to get through a dense paper like this. And what it's done is it's uh, listed some key concepts. I've asked it to do it in 500 words. You could ask it to do it in 100 words. You could ask it to do it in a short paragraph. It doesn't matter. But I've done 500 words just because. So I'm noticing here five main endotypes. This is interesting. I'd like to learn a bit more about this, different five different ways that sepsis might prevent from a immunological or host defense point of view. So I'm going to ask Claude to just give me a bit more detail about these five endotypes and their clinical relevance. So please provide more clinical detail on the five endotypes identified, including a clinical presentation and potential therapies, because this is what I want to know. How's, how do these patients present and what can I do about it? So Claude's going to chew on that for a bit and now is breaking down the five main sepsis endotypes for me. And that might be the bit of this paper that I choose to focus on to get a little bit more information, to be more knowledgeable than I was before about sepsis. But I know if I read it, I'm probably going to forget it within an hour or two, certainly by tomorrow, definitely by next week. So um, I might do a little bit more work on this so that I have a way of taking this information in, because it looks interesting. What, what do we have? Um, there's an endotype with a high mortality where you, you, you've got marked immunosuppression, that's type one, the neutrophil suppressive one, but potentially could respond to dexamethasone. Then type two, an inflammatory endotype, high mortality with excessive inflammation, that's your cytokine storm one. The potential therapies might be specific um, immunologically targeted therapies. And then the third one, interferon type. I remember interferons have something to do with viruses, and yep, it's saying this is more common in viral sepsis, including COVID, uh, but has a better prognosis than the first two. 
Then the fourth one, the adaptive endotype, that has a lower mortality rate with a better regulated immune response and preserved T cell function, more effective clearance of your pathogens, better preservation of organ function, so less likely to get multi-organ failure. So it's supportive care for that. And the last endotype, the innate host defense. This is really where everything's doing what it's meant to do. You get an effective early immune response. The inflammation is targeted and appropriate, um, well-regulated and preserved organ function. Okay, so I think that's interesting might explain why some patients do really badly with sepsis and some patients get their antibiotics, bit of supportive care and do well. So here's the next really cool thing we can do with AI. Um, I'm going to choose to create a graphical representation of these five endotypes. So I'm going to copy this last section from Claude the five endotypes and more details. And I'm gonna open another tool. This is Napkin AI, napkin.ai. It's completely free to register and use. And you create a new napkin, creating a blank napkin. I'll modify the title so it's not too wordy. I'm gonna delete bits that I don't want to make a graphic on. So I want the five endotypes. I don't want those uh, that other information down there that Claude provided for my for my graphic. And the trick then is to select everything and you see that little lightning bolt on the left. I'm gonna click on that and then make the magic happen. Here, Napkin provides me with different styles of graphical representations of the data we've put into it. And I quite like this one, but there's lots more to choose from. We could go through some more. You can generate more if you don't like the ones it's got. If you pick one and like it, but want to change the colors, you can do that. So it's really versatile on the free plan, but I'm going to go back. I like this one better. So I'm going to select this one and I'm going to have a little look. You can make some modifications to this. I'm going to save it as a PNG file. I could make it dark mode or light mode. And I downloaded it into my downloads folder. So cool. I got the paper, which I didn't read. I got Claude to summarize it for me. I found something interesting in that summary and I've made a graphic of that. The next thing I want to do is store this stuff so that I can see it when I need it. All right. So I'm going to copy that title and my note keeping app of choice is Evernote, but you might use OneNote or many of the other options available. So I'm going to open a new Evernote uh, note, put paste that title in, and then I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And the first thing I'm going to put in it is the graphic that I made on napkin. I'm going to drag that in. And so the first thing I see when I review this note is that graphical representation of the five endotypes. The next thing I'm going to do is go to Claude and I'm going to copy the summary it's made of the paper for me. So that could be the next thing that I read. I'm going to go to my downloads folder and I'm dragging in the actual paper. So, and I'm going to tag this. The key to Evernote is tags. I've tagged it sepsis and I'm going to move it into my clinical notes notebook. All my new clinical information, clinical notes that I want to remember, I put it in the notebook and I tag it with the type of area of medicine it is. So this is this will go in to all my sepsis notes. So if I if I search sepsis in Evernote, then you can see that my five main sepsis endotypes is the most recent note there with the sepsis tag. We click on that and there we go. We've got my infographic um, I've got my Claude summary underneath and then finally the paper. So rather than wading through a paper, figuring out what I want to remember from it this way, I've saved a lot of time in five to 10 minutes rather than read the paper start to finish, which would take me a couple of hours to truly do that. Uh, I'm such a slow reader. I've got Claude to read it, extract something interesting from it, made an infographic from that put that into a note that I will review whenever I want to do a talk on sepsis or review sepsis or revise sepsis. Um, I'll, I'll find this note, but I'll see the infographic first and the infographic 
will remind me about the five endotypes and then I've got the option to read the summary about them from Claude and then the full paper is referenced below that all within Evernote. So um, that's one little workflow that you might choose to copy. Remember you can use ChatGPT or Gemini, Mistral, any of the other uh, large language models that have free plans um, or you might be a subscriber to one of them to read medical papers for you and then summarize them. And then if you want to make little graphics for to, to remember certain concepts more easily, then Napkin AI is a great tool. And of course, I can make a PowerPoint slide out of that graphic that I've stored later on if I'm teaching this concept to someone else once I've read about it in a bit more depth. I hope you found that interesting. I'm using AI tools for my medical learning and teaching every single day now. There are some mind-blowing free tools out there that you can use and I'll be making some more videos about those in the near future. Thanks for watching.